Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journalcast on Landmark Papers in Surgery. I am Victoria Miles, a general surgery resident from the University of Tennessee College of Medicine in Chattanooga, and I will be briefly reviewing the landmark paper, Does Size Matter? A Prospective Analysis of 28 to 32 versus 36 to 40 French chest tube size in trauma which was published in the Journal of Trauma and Acute Care Surgery in February of 2012. Chest tube insertion is one of the most common invasive procedures performed in the trauma population. For years, residents have recognized that varying, some quite strong beliefs exist among trauma attendings as to what size chest tube should be utilized for hemo and pneumothoraces. In the eighth edition of the Advanced Trauma Life Support Student Manual, a 36 French chest tube was recommended for a hemothorax and a 38 French for a, quote, massive hemothorax. Historically, it is believed that a larger bore chest tube will allow for more adequate drainage of blood, whereas the use of a smaller bore chest tube may result in incomplete or slow drainage of a hemothorax or lead to clotting of the tube. This was substantiated by a survey of cardiothoracic surgeons published in 2009 in the Journal of Cardiac Surgery, which noted the concern for blood clotting within the chest tube to be the most cited reason for the use of a large bore 36 French chest tube. At the time of publication of this study in 2012, however, no definitive evidence existed to assert what chest tube size was just right. This three-year study was performed at a single level one trauma center in California between 2007 and 2010. All adult trauma patients with tube thoracostomy performed within the first 12 hours of admission were included in the study. These patients were followed prospectively. Patients were excluded from the study if death occurred within the first 24 hours of admission. Tube size choice was left to the attending's discretion. All tube thoracostomies were performed by emergency medicine or surgical residents and supervised by attending physicians. Per the institution's protocol, cefazolin was administered prior to the placement of the chest tube. The purpose of the study was to analyze whether a larger chest tube size impacted the incidence of pain, need for intervention, and retained hemothorax. Retained hemothorax was defined as persistent fluid collection, which was noted to be heterogeneous to CT scan within 14 days of initial chest tube placement and requiring intervention. The authors hypothesized that no difference would be observed between the chest tube sizes for retained hemothorax and need for intervention, and that the larger bore chest tube population would experience increased pain. Over the study period, 353 chest tubes were placed in 293 patients. Approximately 50% of the tubes were placed for hemothorax and 50% for pneumothorax as demonstrated. A hemothorax necessitating chest tube placement was present in 233 patients with 42 of these having bilateral hemothoraces. Notably, of the 275 chest tubes placed for hemothorax, 144 were small, 28 to 32 French, representing 52.3% of the subset. 131 of the chest tubes placed for hemothorax were large, 36 to 40 French, representing 47.7% of the subset. These small and large chest tube and hemothorax groups were compared and significant differences are listed as shown. The small chest tube group was less likely to have a GCS less than eight, systolic blood pressure less than 90, head AIS greater than three, and ISS greater than 25. The groups did not differ in age, sex, injury type, respiratory rate on admission, abdomen AIS, extremity AIS, nor operative interventions on admission to include craniotomy, craniectomy, thoracotomy, nor laparotomy. In addition to bivariate analysis, the groups did not differ in their specific chest injuries in addition to hemothorax to include pneumothorax, pulmonary contusion, rib fractures, sternal fracture, subcutaneous emphysema, pneumomediastinum, 
and flail chest. When compared, there was no difference in initial output in patients receiving large and small bore chest tubes. There was no difference in overall need for subsequent intervention rates for retained hemothorax between patients undergoing small and large chest tube placement to include additional chest tube insertion, intrapleural thrombolysis, image-guided drainage, video-assisted thoracoscopic surgery, nor thoracotomy. This remained true when adjusted for a GCS less than 8 or equal to 8, systolic blood pressure less than 90, head AIS greater than or equal to 3, and ISS greater than or equal to 25. Patients with pneumothorax, with or without a hemothorax component, were analyzed as a separate cohort. This included 281 patients with 150 receiving small bore tubes and 131 receiving large bore tubes. The retained hemothorax incidence did not differ between the groups. Pain scores were available for 158 patients within one hour of procedure. Surprisingly, the mean visual analog scale pain scores did not differ between the small and large bore chest tube groups. This study does have several limitations. First, this is a single center study. The patients were not randomized and chest tubes utilized were left to attending discretion. Regarding pain scores, documentation was available for only 50% of the study population. Importantly, the large and small bore chest tube hemothorax groups differed in terms of GCS, admission systolic blood pressure, head AIS, and ISS. Finally, and significantly, the study did not consider the use of sub-20 French chest tubes, which are now widely employed by many trauma centers, especially for the treatment of pneumothorax. To conclude, no difference was observed in the initial output or pain experienced by the patient for small 28 to 32 French and large 36 to 40 French chest tubes. Additionally, no difference was seen in overall complication rate between patients undergoing small and large chest tube placement. Finally, when pneumothoraces were analyzed separately, no difference was identified in unresolved pneumothorax between small and large bore chest tubes. The authors point out that the flow or rate limiting point of the chest tube lies in the connection to the drainage tubing. The connection becomes the bottleneck. As a standard connector is utilized for nearly all chest tubes, the authors hypothesize a larger chest tube will not speed or hasten the drainage. Consideration should be given not only to chest tube size, but to the number and size of side holes, kinking of the tubing, and effectiveness of the wall suction. After reviewing this landmark paper, I still ask myself, how small a chest tube can we place and still achieve maximum benefit for our patients? The authors cite two papers in the discussion which suggest tube thoracostomies as small as 12 to 19 French may be just as effective as larger bore tubes, which really paved the way for research into the aforementioned small bore percutaneous tubes we often employ in trauma today. In case you want to check it out, this paper was published in the World Journal of Surgery this month, and after analyzing the outcomes of 43 patients, the authors concluded 14 French pigtail catheters were equally as effective for patients with traumatic hemothorax or hemoneumothorax as compared to 28 to 32 French chest tubes. In addition, the patients undergoing pigtail catheter placement reported a more tolerable insertion experience. It's not lost on me that Dr. Rhee was the senior author on this paper as well. I'm Victoria Miles, a general surgery resident at the University of Tennessee College of Medicine in Chattanooga. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email listed below. Don't forget to review this content with the current This Week in Score modules, Thoracic Part 1 and 2. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for more landmark surgical papers presented by the ACS Resident and Associate Society and Behind the Knife.